Let's see if the owl talks to you. Oh, there's Eli. Good morning, everybody. Oh, whoa. Did you guys did you guys hear Andy? Yes. Okay. You know what, guys? You need to do me a favor and answer me verbally, okay? Because I can't see you very well. <laughs> so Eli goes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> verbally means unmute and say, yes, I heard you. All right. Yes, we heard you. So, yay, thank you. So everybody, welcome. Um, I am not going to refer to you guys as virtual learners. I'm going to refer to you as our at-home learners because there's nothing virtual about what we're doing, okay? <laughs> so you are our in-person learners, and you guys are our at-home learners. So if there's ever a question, that's the answer. Did everybody at home get their ingredients bags who needed it yes we got them yay yes eli oh that was a perfect lead-in um yeah and i have a tzedakah box and i have a class list and all that kind of stuff but it's not right here um henry can you please go to uh you know where the mailboxes are in the um you know where the mailboxes are in the office? Who knows where the mailboxes are in the office? DJ's got it. Oh, Eli knows. Okay. Oh. You want to get it? All right, thank you. That was awesome. Go get it from my mailbox. Mm. There's a list, uh, or it might be on the desk at the front. There's a class list that's the DACA box. So you guys, this is my first class teaching this big class with cooking. So thank you for your patience this morning. Mm. Um, just switch them. Um, switch the uh, switch the computer. The computer will go into here, and then put this in. Here. Yeah, oh, you're gonna have to unplug something else too, because you need to plug the extension cord in. Okay, so today I can unplug the owl temporarily. Yeah, just unplug it, and we'll hook it back up again. Okay, so today what I wanted to do is I wanted to use, uh, welcome, by the way, Kitchen as a Sacred Space. That's the name of our class. Am I pronouncing your name right, Faina? Faina. Okay, awesome. Should be good. Thank you. Um, and since everybody's not here, Henry, why don't you go over and sit with Dante and Faina so that you're not by yourself? Oh, look, the owl came. Did you hear that? It would whoop, whoop. <laughs> Okay, um, so what we are going to do in this class is we are going to base our discussion on the, um, the Jewish home blessing. How many of you ha are familiar with or maybe saw up in a store a plaque with a blessing for the home that talked about many things a home could be? Has anybody seen one of those? All right, well, I'm going to share the one right now so you can see all right so at home i'm not sure if you can see this um we can see you can see it okay um how about my in person can you read that maybe kind of no, daniel good. can you play with the lights and see if you can get the lights down in here for now hi guys I, that's okay uh, you're, over there. Yeah. you're at that table yeah oh, well, you are with him. I had him move because I didn't know, because there was nobody else there. So, Henry, why don't you go on back again? So, because we're going to work in these work groups for a while. So, yeah. Okay. Ah, that's better. Thank you. We'll turn them up later. So, this is this is what might be considered a typical blessing for the home. Um, can somebody? Uh, let's see. Andy, can you read this out loud for us? Can you see it? Thank you. Perfect. May this home be a place of happiness and health, of contentment, generosity, and hope, a home of creativity and kindness. May those who visit and those who live here know only blessings and peace. So thank you, Andy. This is a very common thing to see in homes in Israel. How many of you have been to Israel? How many of you have seen signs like this in the shuk, in the markets, right? They have all different kinds. Some of them say different, slightly different things. They have different words. 
Um, there is uh, there there is a huge list of words that you can associate. We've got happiness, health, contentment, generosity, hope, creativity, kindness, blessings, and peace. Those are the nine words I typically see. And so what I want to do with our class is base our kitchen and cooking experience on the uh, the elements here and we're going to come up with some on our own besides so these are all great words for a house why am i applying them to a kitchen if you're at home just speak up because i can't see you very well because the kitchen is the center of the house in many cases the kitchen is the center of the house that's a good reason what else People congregate in the kitchen, right? It's a place of community, right? It's a place where we get together. What else? What's a word that's not on here that's often associated with food? Delicious, what else? Good, what else? Ah, Eli saves the day with the class list and the Tzedakah box, maybe? No Tzedakah box? All right, Eli, will you go around and collect Tzedakah since you have some? Thank you. That would be awesome. Um, what's a word we say blank food? You say, oh my God, I've had such a bad day. I am in the mood for some comfort. Thank you. Comfort food, right? How many times have you heard that? So we've got comfort, community. Go ahead, Henry. Five hundred times Henry's heard it, and he's counted it every single time. For the record, oh, that was an estimate. Okay, all right. What other words do you associate with the kitchen? Why? Why is the kitchen a sacred place? Anybody else? Go ahead, Henry. I think I heard you, you said you make food to feed people on special occasions and, and for your family. So is it a way to care for other people, right? And you know the whole, there's that whole stereotype about the Jewish mother, right? You walk in the door and what does the Jewish mother say? Eat. Go ahead, what was that, Ellen? Eat, Essen Kinder, eat. Eat, Essen Kinder, eat, my children, right? Essen Kinder is in Yiddish. S, S, eat, eat, that's kind of the joke. So um, today we are gonna start this sacred journey in the kitchen with blessings. So um, blessings, why do we recite blessings? What is the purpose of a blessing? You guys can just stay unmuted. You're not gonna bother me. Because if you have to go back and forth, you're not going to be as spontaneous. What did I ask you? I don't even remember. What are blessings for? What, what is the purpose of a blessing? Thank you so much. Aaron. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. One more time. So a person in your blessing can be blessed. So to ask blessing for somebody. What is another reason for a blessing? Eli. That God, that God gives out blessings. So maybe you're asking God for something, right? What else? What's another reason for a blessing? Lily. Say it louder. To change something. So you mean to ask God to change something? Or, yep, so maybe to ask God to change something. What else? To show our gratitude and thankfulness. To show our gratitude and thankfulness, gratefulness, absolutely. Um, that's the one you know how during uh, tefillah today, watch when it goes up and we do our silent prayer. Do you, anybody know what the three words are that Rabbi Shana has on there? Henry. Oops, okay. PJ. Gimme. And what's the third one, Lily? Wow, oops, gimme and wow. So those are the main things. Eli, what do you have to add? <laughs> um, I do, I have like three of them and they're all in my office, but you know my name. So I think I'm okay today. 
I will try to wear it next time. I'm Deb, for those of you who don't remember. I am. Okay. So, oops, gimme and wow. And today we're going to talk a little bit about um, gratefulness. So, um, if it's about class, you can ask. Is it about what we're talking about? I'm so glad. Okay. All right. So, um, we're going to talk about blessings in the context of Havdalah. What is Havdalah or Havdalah? Lily. It's at the end of Shabbat. We celebrate, it's a service we celebrate on Saturday night. What are the symbols we use during Havdalah? Somebody online, shout it out for me because I can't, don't raise your hand. Water. Candles. Candles, what kind of candles? Havdalah braided candles. Braided candles, Havdalah candles are braided. What else, Eli? And uh, challah is a Shabbat symbol, but we don't specifically use it for Havdalah. What are the two other things we use for Havdalah? Andy? Spice box. Spice box. Great. Why do we use a spice box? Who knows? Who has an idea? Anybody online? Let me give this one to our um, at-home learners. What's a spice box for? Crickets. All right. Henry? Louder, please. Okay, so, but in a spice box, we're not eating them. So what are we doing instead with that spice box? No, David? Smelling. Yeah, smelling it, exactly. Eli? Wine. The wine is the third symbol, very good. What's so special about wine? How do we make the wine special at Havdalah? It's just wine. It could be grape juice, could be wine. What makes the wine at Havdalah different? What do we do to set it apart from the tea in my cup? We bless it. Thank you. It's like I have ringers today. I love it. Um, so we say blessings and blessings help to take things that are ordinary and make them holy. Okay, it sets them aside. Oh, what is the Okay, so the purpose of smelling beautiful spices on Shabbat is um, there's actually a couple of great explanations. Hello, guys. Where where are uh, um, Teddy and I'm drawing a blank and Abby at this table? Come on over, guys. Okay. Um, so spices. There's a couple different stories. Let me answer this question and then I'll call on you, Eli. Um, what uh, the couple of examples are? Spices. Have you ever heard the rabbi say that we breathe in this the spice, the special Shabbat spice? She says on Friday evenings right before services. So it sort of stuns you into recognizing that things are different. So we smell it at the end of Shabbat to bring the sweetness of Shabbat into our bodies and take it with us into the week to come. The other explanation comes from Jewish mysticism, which is that on Shabbat, we are each granted an extra soul. Okay, only on Shabbat. It comes to us on Shabbat and it leaves us at the end of the day on Saturday night. And so the sweetness of the spice um, is explained by Jewish mystics to lessen the feeling of loss we get when that spirit leaves us at the end. We breathe in this spice as a way to sort of keep that beauty with us. Isn't that interesting? Eli. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Thank you. I'm going <laughs> to, so let's try to stay on topic, okay? Um, but thank you. Okay, so um, what we are going to do today with our spices um, is um, we are going to elevate a regular cookie with our Havdalah spices and make Havdalah cookies. So um, let's see, uh, who haven't, what, what Madrid haven't I asked for help yet? Aaron, come here. Please, can you pass out the recipes? Because our people at home hopefully all have them. It goes against a religious principle. Sorry to hear it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 
We're going to use the laptop that's in there. You just have to pay the cord off the table. It's taped to the table. So you're going to reach all the way out for us to the meeting? Well, no, but you can move. Yeah, you can make okay. it's, it's no. the because it's on a label sheet that it shouldn't be on. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so those of you at home, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, guys, let's, uh, uh, who did the lights? Daniel, can you turn our lights back on so we can see? And we are going to hopefully quickly, I am going to mix up the dough today because we had a lot of introduction today, but I want you guys to be able to see what's going on you are welcome to come over i was going to hook up a camera but i'm out of time it's more important that we get the dough made what you like oh thank you for offering not at this time i'm going to do this quickly so that we can finish it before tefillah i think so what i want you to do if you are at home are you in your kitchens and ready to go ready ready all right so um i Sorry. I got it. No worries. Um, let's see. Dante, do you have a loud voice? Maybe. All right. So um, can you read the description while I start putting butter into the bowl? By the way, you at-home learners, um, you can continue. I'm going to make this quickly. You can continue making it while you are listening to Tefila if you need to, okay? So we're just going to go ahead and do this. So Dante, please stand up. Oh, you didn't get one? Aaron, you missed the table, bud. Did you want to find it, please? Thank you very much. All right, stand up. Guys, shush, shush. Dante, stand up loud and read. Uh, the explanation, that's not measured. <laughs> the description, sorry. Can you go get me um, a nice uh, Zimmerly? I think it is. Zim oh no, sorry. These are Zimstern cookies. Oh, that's a great question. So for our at-home learners, no, they are not pre-measured. The only thing pre-measured is your honey. Everything else you need to measure. I'm not going to take all the work out of it for you. You guys have to work for this. Um, and you guys, let's see. I would like to have Lily and um, let's see. I need one other volunteer to come up. Eli, I've already had help from you. Aaron, I've already had help from you. Who hasn't done much? You all you did was pass out papers. Come on, Aaron. Um, well, and we'll do different things, but um, can you please, Lily, measure out a cup of sugar? And um, can you please weigh out, we're gonna go on to the kilograms and pounds setting on that, hit the button for me. We're gonna use this. Um, we are gonna weigh out so the ounces are on that side. You need uh, two ounces. Don't hurt my scale, please. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Two ounces, please. All right, so we're measuring out the butter and the sugar, and we're going to go ahead and put it into the bowl. Four, oh, that's four ounces. Yeah, I only want two ounces. By the way, in a perfect world, before class, you are all going to wash your hands, OK? So I've been washing my hands all morning. Um, but um, after tefillah, when you come back, please make sure you wash your hands really well. Everything we're going to be handling in here is going to be pre-cooking, so we don't have to wear gloves. 
necessarily. If we handle stuff after cooking, that's food that we're sharing, we're gonna to wanna to wear gloves when we do that, okay? Go it all the way up to the top. All right, thank you. Not at this time, thank you. All right, so I like to, those of you who have taken my cooking classes before, there's a couple of you in here, know that I like to weigh out ingredients. Does anybody remember why I like to do that? Oh, you, you didn't take cooking for me? Why did I think you had? Daniel, why you took a class? Why? Weighing is more accurate because um, with, thank you, perfect, Lily. Um, because when you, uh, when you have like flour, for example, it can have a different amount of water content. It can have a different fluffiness. You can pack it tight. You can make it loose. The only way to make sure you have the uh, prescribed amount is to weigh it. So I'm a big fan of weighing my ingredients. It's also easier when you have stuff like, when you have stuff like honey, Sorry, this might be loud out there, but when you have stuff like honey, it's really hard to measure, right? To get it all out um, and to get an exact amount it tends to bubble up and whatever. So I just weigh it out. Here's a trick for measuring honey, by the way. If you have oil in your recipe, measure your oil in the same cup you're gonna measure your honey. Then put the honey in and it should slide right out. together and we want to do that until it gets fluffy. Uh, again, in a perfect world, you might fluff your butter first um, and then add your sugar to it because it'll tend to get even fluffier. Um, but we're not going to do that today. I'm going to screenshot that chair. Boy, I can't even hear myself. I'm going to have no voice by the time we get to tequila. Yes, sir. We are making cookies. I know, how fun is that? All right, so, um, what's that, Teddy? Okay, well, I'll tell you what, can you eat them? Will you eat some extra for her? Okay, that's really nice of you, I like that. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So, um, okay, so I need another volunteer who can measure quickly. Daniel, come on up. Um, into this cup, please. No, not that cup. Go get a bowl that's a little bigger than that. We're gonna put a cup of flour and all the spices in it. All right, so at home, you wanna measure your um, cup of flour and put your spices into it that we're measuring. Um, and you're going to kind of whisk that together. In the meantime, Mason, go get a bigger bowl for me. I keep forgetting I need extra bowls. I miss Deb. my kitchen. Deb? Yes. For, for at-home learners, sometimes it's hard because our mixer's going to hear you going on to the next instruction. Oh. So maybe you're still on butter and eggs. <laughs> yeah, that's Sorry. right. I forgot about the eggs. So um, all we're yeah. doing, all we're doing is we're staging everything else. So I'm having these guys come and start measuring out my spices and my flour. So all I've done so far is creamed the butter and the sugar. Okay. okay. So the next okay. thing we add to this is the eggs, right? Yes. We're going to add the eggs and vanilla and we're going to beat it some more. So go ahead and do that. And I promise not to say anything critical while you're doing it. Nope. Um, oh, for one cup, that'll work for you. Yes. I need a bowl that's about a medium mixing bowl. Nope, anything. I'm just putting flour in it. Yes. Okay, so you need to measure 4.4 4 ounces. All right, so just make it four and a quarter is what that'll say. Hit the tear button yeah. or the zero. You know how to do that? Yeah. Awesome. All right. When he's done, you're going to measure. Um, all right. Who can do the math fast? What's 4.4 times 4? 
Don't do it out loud, Henry. 4.4 times four, Eli. Nope. No. Aaron. Thank you. 17.6. You didn't know I was going to make you think, did you? Yep. Four and a quarter. All right. So take that and then use your teaspoon and tablespoon measures to measure the spices right into there. Okay. I'm going to give this to Mason. And you're going to take this. You know how to use one of these? Okay. So you're going to put that on and zero it out. Put the zero. There you go. And now you need to measure. You can use this to get it out. Okay. You need to measure. Uh, what did we say? 17.6. Yes, 17.6 ounces. Just hold it over top. And fling it, fling it across the room for me. You guys doing okay at home so far? You think so? Yes. Are Just you doing vanilla. okay at home, Zalewski's too? We're doing Just good. Vanilla. All right, I'm about to add the eggs and vanilla and start spinning. We have not done that yet, so here we go. Andy, come up and break some eggs for me, will you? You're putting it in with your cup of flour. Try not to get it on the computer, if you can help it. All right, so put one in, and then we're going to spin it. Oh, my gosh, I have to give her my egg, my I egg know. secret. What's the secret? So go ahead and put it in. Oh, okay. I got it. Oh, well. There's going to be an eggshell in it, and we're going to survive. All right, so I'm going to show you something. I have a, this is from my previous cooking class, too. What are we doing? At home, guys, I'm about to give a secret. Okay. Turn on. Can you all hear me? All right. Richardson's, you were in a cooking class with me. What's my secret about breaking eggs? Do, Dan, it, on, do, do it on the table. Do it on the table. Why? Uh, so that it cracks properly. I don't know. Right. Because when you crack it on the edge of a bowl, it makes little teeny little, when you hit it on the edge, it makes eggshell dust. And you don't want that to get in. So at least when you break it here, you don't get dust, you just get big pieces. And those are much easier to pick out if they get into your mixture. You don't, you just wipe it up. Don't be afraid. It's okay. All right, so I'll show you one. Yes, and then I have one left. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. You just go quick and you let it go on and see, oh, look, there was a big eggshell. Let me pull that one out. Such a great example. I don't know this table, so everything okay. cracks differently. Give it a try, girlfriend. Don't be okay. afraid. Um, let's see. Henry, can you go get some paper towels? There we go. All right. Get that spinning around. In a perfect world, we would have spun it in between. You really want to mix it in one egg at a time. Does anybody know why? Oh, my. All right, this looks lovely. How much? Oh, good. It's only 10 o'clock. Okay. You got your We're good. 17. So? That's 16 and a half. You need one more. Oh. How many ounces in a pound? 16. Thank you. 16, indeed. Perfect. 17 and a half, right there. All right. So you can see Daniel is having fun trying to get. Oh, actually, that wasn't supposed to go in there, just the spices. Oh. But. You know, it's okay. Oh, the honey was here. Yeah. Oh, but you know. Um, oh, don't worry about it. All right. So what we will do is, yeah, set that in there. I'm going to take this aside. We're going to scoop out some of this. Go ahead and mix the spices into there. We want to mix the spices into the dry stuff first. Anybody know why we're mixing the spices into the flour before we mix it with the whole thing? 
This one's just a logical question. There's no trick. Louder, please. So it all mixes in. When you're mixing a very small amount of something in, um, frequently it doesn't get it doesn't get mixed up very well. So um, let's see, uh, Fina, do you Excuse want to come and whisk for us? Are you a good whisker? Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Come on, you're gonna bake today. Once Daniel yep. gets this all mixed in, you're gonna gently stir it with a whisk, okay? This way? No, yep. this way, once he's done, okay? And that's gonna distribute the spices throughout the flour for us. Eli. Yes, cookie dough, cookie dough gets very hard and hard to stir. If you don't, once we get up to that point when we are um, mixing in all the flour, um, you should know that, um, one second, I see you, hang on. Um, once we get to that point, we are going to, um, uh, yeah, this mixer can handle it. If your mixer can't handle it, then you need to just mix it on the counter to mix in the rest of the flour. Um, Jody, what question did you have? Uh, we were just gonna say the Zalewskis were trying to get your attention. Oh, Zalewskis, hi. Is the honey the thing that's pre-measured or? The honey is the thing that is pre-measured, yes. Cause I didn't wanna make you go through that, except my honey, honey. All right, did we add the vanilla yet? We did not. Where is the vanilla? There it is. All right, so because I am a baker, and I haven't given you my background and why I'm qualified to do this, but we'll do that another time. Um, I'm not gonna measure it, I'm gonna literally pour it in, okay? <laughs> this is what I do. There is never too much vanilla in my personal uh, belief. Uh, this is gonna drive you crazy if you're um, an exact person, but yes, sir. Ha! I'm going to do it every class just for you, David. All right, so I'm going to stir the bottom real quick um, just to make sure that the butter and sugar aren't stuck to the bottom now that the eggs have mixed in. All right. Now, remember, you guys, I know it's not fun to sit there and watch somebody else bake necessarily. Uh, for you in-person learners, but you will have the recipe. These are all readily available ingredients, so you can do it at home. Uh, hang on, Eli. I want to go on to the next step here so we don't run out of time. Um, okay, boy, this went really weird. Okay. Um, baking soda. Add that to Fina's bowl. She needs three quarters of a teaspoon into that bowl. Okay. So you got to find, pub. yeah, you'll figure it out. All right, eggs and vanilla, beat in the honey. All right, so our honey is actually honey in a cup of flour. So we're gonna go ahead and add that now. Um, it shouldn't be, but um, I think it's gonna work just fine. I'm not worried about it. Eli, tell me your question. Okay. All right. So you should be mixing your honey in at home and make sure that it's thoroughly combined. They're probably done before me because I'm talking so much. What's that? Um, you know what? Can you ask John? Are you okay? Did you hurt yourself? Okay. All right. I don't normally just send bleeding people out of my classroom. That's why I'm asking. What's that? Can you what? Of course. All right, so I'm mixing, since I had the flour in here, I'm just doing a quick stir so it doesn't get stuck on the bottom. So those of you who don't know, um, another one of my jobs is uh, before I was here, I actually just closed a baking business. Um, so I used to make really crazy decorated cakes. So I learned a thing or two about baking over the years, and I'm, I always, I can't help but share all those tips. All right, good. 
perfect. Thank you, Fina. Perfect. All right, Mason. Have you started adding your flower? Yeah, yes. we just finished. Yeah, we All right, them. great. So keep going. Any questions from at home since I'm, I have a hard time hearing you? We're still oh. making our spices. Oh, cool. That's all right. So uh, while one of you is making the spices, the other one can come over here. Um, the other one can start adding the flour in. So what you're going to do, we're going to keep this on a low speed. All right, and you're just gonna scoop in a bit at a time, like that. And then you wait until it's somewhat in. That's good, now we have some more. You just keep until you get the whole thing done. All right, I wanna do this Okay, so after we add all, the, all this flour, then we're gonna go back and we're gonna add in the flour with the spices and the baking powder. The reason we're holding that one out to last is because, can you guys at home hear me? Yes, can you? Yes, okay. Uh, the reason we're adding the very function last is because we also have the baking powder in it. My brother has a baking powder in it. What is baking powder due to the back of it? So now before I do anything else, well, we gotta put this here, you can do this one. While he is putting in, now that um, my, most of my flour is in, we're gonna just sprinkle slowly, not too slowly, but you know, sprinkle in while it's on low. Uh, now we're gonna do a quick recipe test. So I do this all the time 
Listen, listen to this, by the way. Listen to how it stops. You ready? It's going to stop suddenly. You ready? You hear how stiff that dough is? So when you're baking or cooking, you want to use all your senses. You want to use your nose. You want to use your eyes. You want to use your hands. You want to feel things. And you want to use your ears. You want to know. I can tell sometimes when I'm making something uh, if it's ready for the next step by a change in the sound of the mixer. OK? So you always want to pay attention with all your senses. So this is what the dough is like, just so you can see. All right, it's, a, it's not a super stiff dough. It's not like a gingerbread dough quite. Um, after it is refrigerated, it will be somewhat stiffer, but still able to be rolled out. So, oh my gosh, it's 10, 12. We have three minutes to spare. Um, so what we're going to do with this now, for those of you who are at home, you're going to do this. We don't have to do this, I don't think. Can you count how many people are sitting here? Yeah. Um, we don't have to do this here, but uh, at home, you're going to take what you just made and you're going to put it in between, you're going to put it, wrap it in plastic wrap and flatten it down until it's about like an inch, like a, an inch, uh, what is that called? A disc. Till it's about an inch thick. It's going to be about this big around. I don't know which camera. There we go. Um, and about that thick. What was I was I saying something else? And yeah, so we're going to do that. Um, those of you at home actually um, have Torah cookie cutters. I thought that would be fun because it um, the sweetness of Torah. So they say when you're studying Torah, la asok bedivrei Torah. Uh, we say a blessing about the sweetness of studying Torah. So I sent home Torah cookie cutters with you. I would like to get those back eventually because um, they belong to the temple. Um, but we didn't have enough of those. And what I was able to pick up for us is we have different sizes of Jewish stars. So we are going to make uh, the, these cookies um, in the traditional way with Jewish stars with different sizes and stuff. Um, what questions do you have? All right, so here's how it's going to work. Um, we are going to finish up here. I need uh, I need a volunteer. I need two volunteers, PJ and Aaron. Um, I want you guys to scrape out this bowl, go get some plastic wrap from the kitchen, and wrap it, flatten it into a disc, and stick it in the fridge. Um, I am going to go wash my hands. Um, I'm always going to try to maybe get out a minute early so I can go set up in there because I got to put my next hat on. So those of you who are at home, um, you are actually going to sign off uh, this Zoom and sign back into Tefila, And then we're going to come back after Tefila, and you're going to sign back into this exact same link, OK? Hi, guys. Hi. Hello, hello. Let me see if I can get the owl on so y'all don't have to just watch me and my little masky face. There we go. Hi, Danielle. When did you join? Did you, were, did you come in the middle of the first class and I missed you popping in? I was here the first one. You were here the whole time and I didn't see you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Welcome in. All right, good. It's hard because I'm trying to look in so many different places at once. So thanks for understanding. Okay. So um, those of you who are, are at home learners, 
Um, please make sure, oh, so Teddy, show them what you have. They're just hold it up like you did. There you go. So Teddy is showing you that you need a rolling pin. Right now, I'm gonna stand behind so you can see it. Um, you can have a regular sized one or you can have a small one like the one he has. Um, our in-person learners also have those. You should also have, thank you, Eli, you should also have your cookie cutters. If you are at home, you may use your Torah cutters or you can use a glass uh, turned over if you want to make round cookies or any other cookie cutters you happen to have that make you happy. You can use a menorah and a Jewish star like the Greenfields and Weber's have. And, oh my gosh, she has a little everything, a pumpkin. So that's a lot of fun. So obviously you can use whatever you want. Just keep in mind, if your cookies are bigger, they may take an extra minute to cook. Yes, Eli. Yes, but remember you don't have to ask. You can just go do it. All right, thank you for showing us that, Teddy. Now, at your tables. Um, at home, did I put dowels in your bags? No, okay, so at home, what I want you to look for, if you have two wooden spoons that have the same size handles or so, go grab those. If you don't, you're just gonna do your best to roll it out to about, uh, you know, to about a quarter inch thick. What I did um, at the last minute for these guys, last night at 10 p.m., um, I cut up some dowels for you. So every rolling pin should have a pair of dowels. So if you are the holder of the rolling pin at your table, go get a pair of dowels. And I will show you what we're gonna do. So one of the frustrating things about making rollout cookies sometimes, wow, um, one of the challenges of making rollout cookies is rolling the dough evenly. And that can get pretty frustrating. And so what we are gonna do, um, we are gonna go into, we're gonna bring out some parchment paper from the kitchen. Do you know where that is? The parchment paper is under the microwave kind of to the right, thank you, PJ. Um, bring a handful of it. So every rolling pin is gonna need uh, two sheets of parchment paper to roll. Okay, so you guys at home, I think I put at least, I think I put two or three in with yours. So hopefully you have one to roll on, one to put over it, and one to put on your cookie sheet. Now, you got to cut them in half too, probably. All right, and what you're going to do is you're going to take your dowels, and your dowels are going to go down on top of your parchment paper. <laughs> Parchment paper, also called patty paper, or it's got lots of names. Um, you're going to take your chilled dough and unwrap it, and you're going to put it down in between your dowels. Then you're going to take your rolling pin and roll across it. And what, the way that works is you're going to roll until your rolling pin is right on the dowels, and then you will have a nice, even layer to cut from. Okay? Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Are we supposed to put the sugar on the on the cutting board first though? I think that would be wise. If you're using a cutting board and you're not using parchment paper, um, then you need to, uh, yeah, you know what, I'm gonna come in. There's some really big sheets. Um, they're in a box, they're on top of a bin that's underneath, under the coffee pots and stuff. Um, if you are rolling on a countertop, then you are going to want to put something down either there's three options you can put powdered sugar you can put flour or you can put cornstarch all those three things work uh, this recipe suggests powdered sugar you got it thank you um wow that's a lot of parchment paper that's plenty i need a couple sheets here i'm going to take three right here so uh, Actually, I don't need three, but that's okay. All right. Well, if you don't need these. Just, uh, no, everybody else does. Why don't you go ahead and put them on this table and ev uh, everybody who's got a rolling pin, whether it's textured or not, needs two sheets of parchment paper. Um, simple trick for ripping things fast. These are twice as big as you need. So put it on the edge of the table and just rip it off, okay? Then you have halves. Magic, come up and get your paper. This is, this is a part audience participation, guys. All right. 
If you are not rolling on counter and you are rolling on parchment paper, you don't necessarily, you don't usually have to put the flower down. We're gonna test it. If it sticks, we're gonna pick it up and put the flower down, okay? Is it sticking, guys, at home? It looks like it's sticking. I'm seeing Zalewski's sticking like crazy. Okay, thank you for testing that out for us, people. Go ahead and scrape it off what there. Is that? And then use a little bit of your powdered sugar underneath it instead. What's what? what? Oh, wow. This is powdered sugar. Um, I want to give everybody some powdered sugar, so yeah, you don't need good. that, hon. No, let's not do it that way. I want you to go to everybody and carefully pour about this much powdered sugar onto one of their parchment papers, okay? All right, so Aaron's coming around with sugar to put on your parchment paper. Did everybody wash their hands? If you have not washed your hands, please do. You want to have clean hands. I will be right back. I'm going to wash mine. I'm going to do it here as well. If anybody has any questions, you can let me know. Yeah, just kind of spread it around a little bit. A little bit of it's going to stick, and that's fine. Put a, listen up, guys. Aaron was passing it around. If you need more, there's some over here. This is a powdered sugar, not flour, but that's fine. That's what you want. We're going to rub a little bit on top of it also. Listen up, please. We're going to put a little bit on top, and then I'm actually going to put a second piece of parchment paper on top of mine because um, that way it won't stick to my rolling pin. You want to roll with a smooth one first, usually. Yes. All right, come on up here. If you, if you have questions about rolling, come on up here and I'm going to demonstrate. Let me see if I can get this to... Oh, like a thin layer and then you put this back on? All right, wait, hang on. Oh, I, I, I... One thing at a time. Huh. All right, so you guys can kind of see uh, who are at home. So all I'm doing is put a piece of parchment paper down, put the sugar on top, a little bit of sugar on top of that, another piece of parchment, and these on the side. Mm. All right, so you want one parchment down, then the stuff, then this, and then we're just going to roll across until the rolling pin is rolling freely on the wood, and then you'll know that you have a nice, even layer. All right? Okay, so we're going to need some more sugar on top. All right, once you have it rolled out, you have a couple options. 
You've seen that we have over there in for the in-person people, we have some textured rolling pins. Are you guys listening? Thank you. We have some textured rolling pins and we have some texture mats over there. I'm gonna demonstrate how to use a textured mat. A textured rolling pin is kind of obvious. You gotta take the top piece off and then roll it. But a texture mat, I'm just gonna take one of these ones too. I like this one, I'm going to try. It's got a little bit of a honeycomb pattern to it. I'm taking the top parchment paper off, and I'm just going to, I don't think anybody's listening. So maybe, in, maybe you guys are at home. I'm just going to roll this across once, and that gives a little bit of a pattern here, so that when I cut out the star, it's going to have a pattern on it. When you go to cut your cookies, I don't even know why I'm talking. Um, when you go to cut your cookies, um, you want to um, try to put them close to one another. Obviously, you don't want to re-roll more than necessary because they don't bake as well. You, you push air into them when you re-roll them. Um, so let me get a little more texture on this. Deb, how, how thick did you say we should roll it? Uh, you want to get it about a quarter of an inch. Um, so it's, uh, I don't have a ruler for you, but I would say, uh, how do you estimate a quarter inch? Maybe like uh, three quarters or three or four quarters on top of each other might be about a quarter of an inch. Um, and then let's see. Um, Henry. Since you're walking around for the moment, can you go in there? Did you see on the rack next to the dishwasher in that far corner, there are cookie sheets? Here, come on, come with me. We'll get them. One of your pieces of parchment paper, you need to have one that goes on the baking sheet. Now, when you put your parchment paper, you're going to want to rip it to fit it on there. If you rip it in half, it'll fit it Thank you. 
have my thing over there so I'm going to show it here too. I have this bamboo mat. This makes a really cool texture. If you have a placemat at home that has a woven texture, you can just set it right on top of your dough. You have to take the parchment off first and then roll your uh, rolling pin over it and it will leave a cool texture on the dough. Okay? One thing I like about texture is that it um, gives a place for the icing to seep into. How's it going there at home? Do you guys have any questions? We're good. All right. Now, as it gets warmer, it's going to be harder to pick up your cookies. When it's cold like this, it's easy to pick it up and put it onto the tray. As it warms up from your hands, it will be harder to do that. So you can either let it rest in the fridge, or you can make those balls and press them flat. How's it going, Henry? Yeah. What? They're just what? I'm just looking at these. Why don't you help me cut mine? What? Oh, yeah. Here's some cutters for you. I need a sip of tea. I'm going to walk around and check while you cut mine out, okay? I don't think we can use the big one anymore. Yeah, not anymore. I, I should have tried to space them in to kind of fit them in, like see how that will just barely fit right there. Try to get as many as you can out of them. Beautiful work. You're trying to get... How's it going at home? I want to see your pictures. I want to see what you're doing there. Oh, 
Oh, look at the Eli's doing good. Can you guys see what they're doing? Oh my gosh, I love the creativity. I think that'll fit. I love it. Are you guys getting ready to roll Kaufman's? You got a plan over there. Yeah, we put them in the oven already. Oh, yay. Right. Okay, so we already have some in the oven. That's good, because then you'll get to show everybody how they look. How's the Ellen Green, uh, the Weber Greenfield kitchen doing? I don't know, I may be muted too. I think they're, oh, look, okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I like how even those, those look. Did you guys figure out a way to roll something? Did you have like um, rolling pin? How did you make it so even? We, uh, we used spoons as the, as the dowels and then we had the parchment paper on top and on the bottom and we just, Perfect. Not, you know, and her muscle. Well power. done. That's exactly right. They look so nice. I think I can get two more in. Um, probably if you turn it. What if we turn it like this? Oh, yeah, that one. Is that work? All right, so I'm going to show you. This is what I meant with what's left. You do want with your scraps. You want them to end up approximately the same thickness as your other cookies. Because if you have different thickness cookies, some of them are going to burn and some of them are going to look. So here's how I'm rolling one here. I'm just going to roll it like this. When I scrap, I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to put it flat. And I'm going to put it on it. And I'm going to push it. So I think it's a lot of right. And you can also do that. Okay, if you need, uh, there are extra oh, wow. trays. If you run out of room on the tray, you have more to go. Speak up. You've got more trays. I had a barely enough to get one more in. All right, awesome. So come over here and grab. There's another tray here. Oh, yeah. And there are some more trays in there if you need them. All right, so if now, anybody has a full tray, let's get some in the oven. We don't, I don't think we have one, do we? No, but we got to roll some of these. Yeah. Come on, get to work, kids. I don't. <laughs> just right. make, did you see how I did that? Just make it into a ball. All right. Roll it in your hands. I need to roll my sleeves up first. That's a good idea. Oppenheimers, do you guys need some more dough? There's more over here if you want. Oh, if you're almost full, you're good. I, yeah, I, I kind of recruited him. He's walking around here. Traitor. All right. I'm going to do this. I like Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Trying to get some of that off. Oh, that's kind of cool. Looks almost like a soccer ball. This one's kind of thick. Okay, don't make it too warm. Uh, there's just like so many cracks in this one. I love how it says that the icing consistency should be the mayonnaise. Oh, yeah. That's great. Right. Oh, yeah. Can we eat the dough? Oh, yeah. um, the, the answer to that is that there is a very, very small risk of I will also tell you that there are millions of people who've been eating raw cookie dough for years and have never gotten salmonella. So I will say um, if you are over the age of 18 or if you are the responsibility of somebody over the age of 18, it is totally up to you. Um, but I will tell you that the current guidance is not. If you are under the age of 18 and you are not with a parent, the answer is no, you may not. <laughs> yeah. Are you stopped? Yeah, let's bring them into the, uh, let's, 
If your trays are full, let's bring them in and get some in and let's see what happens. What does the recipe say about how long it's going to be in? Fifteen. Fifteen minutes. Now, let's go to the doing sorry i have to keep walking into the kitchen now sorry, so it looks like you're all doing fine eli thumbs up you good all right richardson's are good kaufman's still doing good did yours come out yet Ooh, i see mom with a oh cool jody do you have um anything out yet they're in the oven all right mazel tov Thank you. Oh, Zalewski's, look at that. Now, did you guys see what we're doing with the leftover dough? Once it, once you run out of stuff to roll, you can roll them into balls and then flatten them. Just don't make them too thin. All right, make sure your edges are same and thickness. Like, get one yep. It's like straight from the middle. Absolutely. And then I'll show you a trick to get it off. So when the timer goes out, when the timer gets out, we're going to check them because they might not be done. Oh, well, you got it out that way. That works too. Claudia, you doing okay? All right. I think our tray is full. Do you need to unmute? No, you okay over there? I can't tell. You're make, the face makes me nervous. You okay? Are you talking to me? Yes. Oh no, the the audio went into Dan's Bluetooth, so then we couldn't hear anything you were saying, and he heard you upstairs. So. Oh, how nice! Did he learn how to bake cookies? <laughs> He's learning. <laughs> All right. So we may have missed a few instructions. There, know. You know what? There was nothing important. The only thing I talked about is that if you have any leftover dough like this, you can make it into a ball and just press it flat to about the same thickness. And then I just put a little texture on top of this one, but you wanna keep it the same thickness as the rest of your cookies. And that's a good way to get rid of your scraps. Perfect. And should we be making the icing? Oh, uh, yes, go ahead. And I think we will have time also. So we're gonna do that. Oh my, okay. 
we're going to try to get this icing done too, you guys. Yeah. 
Question, Deb. Um, now demonstrate for everybody. Okay, sorry guys, I am back. Deb, can you show us what a pastry brush looks like? I can. So a pastry brush looks like a paintbrush. Oh. And if you don't have one, you can just use a spoon and drizzle it. Okay. I have a pastry brush. Okay. Yeah, just go like we do. Like All right. Brush. So let me change. No, I am going to show you way. how to put this on. All right. So hopefully you guys at home can see this. People who are here, 
come up here and I will show you how I want you to do the icing, or I will uh, demonstrate. There is no right and wrong. However, it's a loose icing on purpose. Since I made this one, I'll go ahead and do it. You want to just brush it on, but you don't want to, we're not trying to get a thick coating. We're just trying to get a nice little glaze on it. So you can see how you can see the texture through it. And it's just going to be pretty. And that's all you're going to do. Okay, real simple. Don't use too much. You don't need a lot. And you just go from cookie to cookie, wipe off your excess, and just tap it like that if you want. Or you can brush it if you prefer. Okay, there should be one bowl of icing per table. So I want you to share that. Bring your tray over to a table with icing and share it and do some here? more. Okay. Here you go, Aaron. Here's a brush for you. Come over here. So you can, nope, come all the way around. You need a brush? Who else needs a brush? I know some of you, your cookies are still in and they haven't come out yet. They're coming slowly but surely. Traitor. What? Under here, traitor. No, I'm not. I was, I was just hired by. Yeah, yeah, hired by a rival company. And you went off, leaving us, deserted us, and now you think you can just come back and brush on icing, huh? Yes. Well, you're right. <laughs> All right, I'll let you guys finish up. Well, you're right. It's a sad state of affairs, but you're right. <laughs> That everyone, no, I see one more. I think I see the last one. Where? Oh, this one. No. These two. Okay, hold on. And this one. And that one. I see that one. Yeah. And this one. And there's probably some more. Uh, she looked there. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, that's everyone. Except some of them aren't. There is no trace in that. Let's try and get this one a little bit better. Yeah. Nice. All right, we got it. She said not to add a thick coating. So, here, let's go bring this over to a different table. Our first batch just came out. Yeah. Nice.
There's our first our first batch. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. stopped working right in the middle because why not right yeah so we've got a bunch of batches in there how did your cookies turn out can you show us and unmute yourselves i can't hear you we added icing and sprinkles to ours oh beautiful hey you guys i don't know how well you can see this but they added icing and sprinkles you can taste them if you want absolutely Ours are not cooled yet. Okay, so you don't need to wait for them to cool all the way. You can put the icing on while they're still warm. Ellen, look at that beautiful tray of cookies. I love it. What about you, Jody and, and Eli? Did you guys get some? Oh, Zalewski's. I love them. Beautiful. Did you try them yet? No. I'm hearing some good, I'm hearing some uh, good, what do you think? What is it? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Uh, our first batch has come out. Oh, awesome. Uh. So I have one more thing for you, and um, you at home learners, I will send this to you. Um, because we talked about Havdalah, I wanted to share with you a sheet that you can just take home. We're not gonna go over this, but this is a sheet that has all of the Havdalah blessings on it. Because if you remember from your high, can you cast these out please? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Um, from your high holiday boxes, uh, you received a Havdalah candle. And so if you still have that candle, I will, um, we're passing around the sheets with the Havdalah blessings on them. Um, and you can do that if you want, it's something fun to try. So the idea is you're supposed to take home some cookies. Those of you whose cookies got stuck in the, in the oven that stopped working, I will finish them for you and I will have them here. I'll freeze them so they'll be good next week. But you should have gotten some from another tray. Is there anybody who did not get cookies? Everybody got a few? Yeah, these are, yeah, you're, of course. I love the way the textures showed up. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, um, did, the... did you taste them yet, Aaron? Yeah. What do you think? Interesting. Yeah, they're a little different, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for asking. Um, all of go around, please, and collect anything that has stuff on it to go into the kitchen for cleaning. Samantha, what are you giggling about over there? Cute stuff. I was making faces. Oh my goodness. Is it on? Okay, thank you. I've got to go in and watch those cookies then. All right, at homers. Did you have fun? Yes. Yeah, a lot of fun. Awesome. All right, you guys, I'm going to I'm going to say goodbye to you because the oven's back on and I don't want the cookies to burn. Okay, I'm going to send you the half dollar sheet and I will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.